Welcome to Tuesday, July 29th, 2025, your day weather podcast being brought to you by the Advocates Injury Attorneys. If you've been injured in an accident, don't face it alone. Get an experienced local Wyoming attorney on your side. Free consultations at wyomingadvocates.com or call 307-800-1952. You deserve an advocate. Well, cooler temperatures and thunder going to be coming into many areas. Beautiful shot there of a shelf cloud near that area of heavy thunderstorms we talked about yesterday that was going to form in South Dakota, parts of Nebraska, then move into Minnesota and Iowa. And that's exactly what happened. We'll show you the severe weather reports out of that system. We're going to see somewhat of a repeat today. Another round of strong thunderstorms, this time more south and west. The thunderstorm development in this pattern today will be somewhat of a repeat, but just a little more south and west of the track of the thunderstorms. We'll show you that. There is a chance over the next several days that hopefully the western counties of Colorado and Wyoming will get some measurable rain from the thunderstorms as there's a bit of a westward push of the monsoon because of what's coming into the northern plains here over the next few days. So along the divide and west of the divide, there might be some rain. Cooling down in many areas, especially east of the divide, as we do see a pattern shift developing over the course of the next seven to 10 days that will have ramifications across North America and the lower 48. Cool shot of some clouds in the Laramie Valley here recently and iridescent clouds in Colorado Springs. Not one photo, but two photo of the colors in those high cirrus clouds. Just the right clouds, just the right sun angle for that iridescence down in Colorado yesterday. Then beautiful shot there of a weasel posing for the camera. They don't stay still very long. So great shot, Steve. Thanks for sending that along. And we've got the moms and the babies out there on the plains. Satellite photos this morning show the remains of the thunderstorm complex that's now early this morning, moving out of Iowa into northern areas of Illinois and Wisconsin, kind of weakening. But as we showed you yesterday, there's a tap of moisture and it's coming around. We also have an active Pacific jet stream wind coming up into the northern areas. And the water vapor loop shows an increase in the subtropical moisture. You can see it's on the western side of the divide now. And here's the deeper moisture riding right along the New Mexico-Arizona border. It's a narrow band. And, and that's kind of what's going to be showing you here over the next couple of days is the thunderstorms are going to really want to be in this narrow band. And this band is going to wobble. Wobble a little west, wobble a little east, then get pushed north. Then it goes around the ring just like this. The severe weather reports, what is uh, interesting about this, if you look at the total wind reports across the nation yesterday, 139 high wind damage reports, three tornadoes there where we have the red dots, and then the hail also being reported in the green triangles there as well. So you can see there was a lot of wind with those systems, also with some thunderstorm activity there. When we take a look at the 500 millibar chart, we see the westward shift of the high pressure from here over the last couple of days to here. This will continue to make it really hot in the East Coast where they're complaining about it all the time. They're gonna get some cooler weather here that will help them out. Here is the next flow of subtropical moisture coming up from the south and the west, as you saw on the satellite imagery and the subtropical moisture showing up very well in the precipitable water into these areas here. So if we just highlight the white, the green, and the blue areas, you can see this is where the thunderstorms are gonna be in this area today and right along the margins. So there's deep subtropical moisture, humidities and dew points are up. So by afternoon, we're gonna see thunderstorms where the moisture is as we get the daytime heating. You can see the thunderstorms here on the western slope beginning to show a possibility and then out here on the plains. Now we'll step through the next six to 12 hours just like we did yesterday. So this is between noon and 6 p.m. This is between 6 p.m. and midnight. So you can see that the thunderstorms form in the Rockies. Then we get a cluster of thunderstorms that comes out on into the plains. And then we have another organization of the thunderstorms, that cluster of thunderstorms but this time more into Nebraska, more into Western Iowa, far Southern areas of South Dakota. So that area will experience severe weather and strong thunderstorms again. And the Storm Prediction Center is highlighting this area where those thunderstorms are gonna form 
and then where they're going to travel. So the severe weather threat is more south and west today. So keep that in mind. Temperatures by late tomorrow afternoon, look at that anomaly. So for those of you that haven't liked the heat over the past few days, well, you're gonna cool off quite a bit with these showers and thunderstorms and the influx of moisture. So let's take a look at where we're gonna be tomorrow. This is for Wednesday. Notice, we have quite a bit of activity here in west, south central and southwestern Wyoming. Western areas of Colorado have some activity as well. Notice we don't have much thunderstorm activity here. Cooler, drier air comes into these areas and the atmosphere just becomes a little bit too stable. But as that moisture band gets pushed further south, you can see Kansas gets into the act. Northeastern New Mexico, the panhandles here. We have this constant arc of thunderstorms from eastern Oregon through Idaho into southwest Montana. So that's Wednesday, that's Thursday. Notice how the thunderstorms wanna be right along and near the divide, not getting further out into the plains because of the stability. This is that push westward of the subtropical moisture, hanging it up right along the divide. Could have a bit of an influx into Arizona Thursday and Friday of thunderstorm activity before we see this pattern shift. This is for Friday. So the thunderstorms are kind of in the same areas for several days in a row, really wanting to hug the terrain, the higher terrain where that lift is going to be. By Saturday, look where the high is now. The high is migrating further, further westward. And what that does is that shunts the subtropical moisture out to sea, and there's drier air that gets entrained right here. So what we're gonna see by the weekend is a reduction of thunderstorm activity down here because of the shunting of the subtropical moisture. But the North Pacific is really active right now and that's gonna to continue to send systems along the Northern tier. That's gonna cool off the East Coast, the Great Lakes in the Midwest, they get a cool down. The heat will be bottled up more across the South. And this, nor this Northern branch of the jet stream, which is really pushing down the high quite a bit here, is gonna cause temperatures for the first week of August to really not be hot at all. This is by this upcoming weekend. This is Saturday. See how the temperatures cool off across the nation's midsection along the East Coast. A lot of the nation gonna cool off this weekend and that trend continues into early next week because of this. We're gonna see the building of high pressure along the West Coast. Now I'm going out pretty far here. This is for the 10th of August, but this particular pattern with the, with the jet stream pushing more south, the high pressure being more suppressed, will allow that cooler air in this weekend. And then what we see is high pressure developing along the west coast. It does look like California will finally get some heat in August. They have had, in some parts of California, the coolest start to summer since 1965. But this change in the weather pattern is going to allow them to get some heat We've got a pretty strong frontal system and trough going into the Northern Rockies and Northern Plains the second weekend of August. We'll just see what transpires, but this allows the jet stream to take a dip. Not only is that going to allow cooler air to come into the Northern Plains for the first week of August, there will be showers and thunderstorms along that cold frontal boundary. If you notice this here in the Gulf, what's that? Yeah, we are likely gonna see a pattern shift that will affect all of North America, not only bringing heat to California and cooler weather to the Northern Plains, but it's going to initiate tropical activity down here. I think it's a foregone conclusion by the second weekend of August or right around that time frame, we will have some tropical storm activity down here. Whether or not it's gonna be right there, don't know, that's too far out. But we're seeing a change in what we call the Madden-Julian Oscillation or the MJO out in the Pacific Ocean that's gonna move things around a little bit towards the middle of August. So we'll see some interesting weather across the region and across the country as we go into August with this weather pattern shift. And that's gonna get it mixed in with still monsoonal moisture plumes, possible cold front there coming out of Canada and the tropical activity picking up in the Southeast United States. And that's by the Sunday the 10th and you can see that cool front wants to push cooler air along and east of the divide and then spread it out into the plains. So August is gonna be a smorgasbord of hot spots and cool spots across the nation. Have yourself a great Tuesday.